outset, I would like to um, express my gratitude for the Kirtankar Mahavir University and uh, the College of Nursing for um, giving me this opportunity to unfold the theme for today's webinar. And uh, I appreciate and congratulate the uh, organizers for organizing this webinar. Now, uh, we, we are going to listen more and more about the palliative care and the various aspects in detail from the very experienced and experts of in the field of palliative care. However, it's very obvious that in recent years, the specialist palliative care services, the number of specialist palliative care services, or the, which is increased in the recent years. This is owing to the demand or need for the such services. So in a view, we can see that the uh, in uh, derivation of palliative care is how it is involved because it, it, we can see that it is an attitudinal change from the thought that we, we have nothing to do. The state has come, the, all the possible measures have been done, failed, and we have nothing to do. From that, a shift of attitude, from that thought of we have nothing to do, but we have something to still to do to keep you alive, alive until your last day. So there, that is the point from the palliative care services tells or explains or shows that's what it is. Now, it's not in recent years, it has been since years. If we look into the history of things also, we can see that the palliative care services are there from the 60s onwards. And the evidence shows that a lot of studies are also done in the field of palliative care. Some of the studies which I would like to uh, uh, point or put for your information also, that um, a study has conducted uh, on um, the uh, utilization of the choice of the patients, what the patient would like to have whether the patients would like to have their days in the hospitals or whether the patients would like to have their days in a home-based settings, utilization of the services. Uh, that was a wonderful study. And simultaneously, the impact of palliative care services on the quality of patients' life. So the outcome parameters have been reduction in the pain, reduction in the symptom management, and reduction in the complaints, and beyond all, the mental health of the patients and the family, the satisfaction of the family. So all these parameters were uh, evaluated as an impact of patient uh, uh, palliative care. So that is also a, a study which, uh, of course, we need to have more more evidences on that so that the momentum can be sustained and we can keep it more forward. And uh, other aspect of the uh, evidence shows that how the patients, those who are supposed to pilot together, there is a separate settings have been started and established and how, what about the experiences, what about the outcomes in a palliative care setting? in an organizational setting, what is the patient's uh, outcome in relation to the patient's various physical and psychological and um, other illness related outcomes of the parent, outcomes were the parameters and the institutions were evaluated for palliative care settings were evaluated for the effectiveness. So the all and, and uh, another aspect of a study which perhaps will be more of uh, the need of the, that will support the need for the more and more palliative care services is the uh, utilization of district hospitals or settings in the palliative care. 
because why the district hospital? Why not to have any other settings or why not a home based thing? So, the thing is that the conditions are mostly in such conditions are diagnosed at the district center. And thereafter, once after the diagnosis, how many of the patients are utilizing it? Or how many of the patients are cleared? How many of the patients get an extended services or continuation of the services? And what is the outcome of these patients those who have diagnosed and after that? That is a very useful study is conducted in the field of palliative care. And um, uh, so many surveys are also conducted on this palliative care and all. All these evidences are suggesting the need of the palliative care, not only to the uh, need, but the specialized practice and services of palliative care to patients and families. And besides, or moreover, the choice of the patients or the family that are so equally to be considered and uh, recognized for this. So all these evidences suggest the uh, foundation for having more in number of the professional palliative care services uh, as on date. Now, when we come into the uh, uh, approaches, of course, we are going to discuss and deliberate about the various approaches and the models and which we are going to take and all. However, in relation to the nursing and in relation to the care part, the stress aspects are more the first and foremost thing which I perceive or I feel that it is communication and breaking the bad news. And in to have this, uh, communication skill and competency, we need to have a thorough understanding about the condition beyond the uh, illness and medical and other things. So the condition that why does the cause of the problems of the patients, so thorough scientific information or knowledge with regard to the cause of the problems of the patients that is very essential for a specialist practitioner especially when, because communication, which we are being modifying when we are communicating with the patient, when we are communicating with the family, and what should be our own basic preparation to communicate the things. So that is the first focus area or approach which wherein we have to develop a skill and competencies by for providing a professional palliative care services. Definitely coping with the uh, failure of medical care and constantly in touch with the uh, patients, those who are suffering and all, and uh, emotional uh, turmoils. And uh, sometimes there will be emotional conflicts also, situational conflicts also. And uh, absorption of anger and grief expressed by the patient and the family. Uh, role confusion. What is our role? Yeah, what we can do. So these are some of the areas where we have to have a control and mastery over these things and in order to practice the quality professional palliative care services. So as I would like to um, say that, the, as I told you that it is something that nothing we can do from that, yes, we can do something. And carrying a patient means dying. It is, um, it is full of paradoxes because uh, we all may be having that experience also. We feel that, yes, patient is dying, but patient is on the deathbed. And what we are doing, perhaps we may not be doing anything. And we internally feel that we are not doing that. anything. Simply they visiting. But visiting that patient who is in the deathbed, it's not regarding. 
the expression of the family, the patient's may be facial expression if the patient can't express or the verbal expression and by the patient and the family and the satisfaction that we can read from the family and the patient face. that is reversed. So this I would uh, I wish that this webinar will deliberate more and more on the palliative care aspects and the things and you all are going to have enough and more uh, experiences or are coming forward for providing the palliative care services which is the need of the company. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for beautifully highlighting the relevance, the importance, and how the recent evidences have proven that palliative care is relevant. It is a burning concern that we healthcare professionals have to focus upon. And uh, as we know, the participants who are participating today, the nursing students, they already have oncology as a unit in adult health nursing. And also a special module is now designed in the semester system exclusively for palliative care. This shows how the importance is you know, coming up to the surface and how the curricular changes are also happening. So as to prepare the future health force also in that direction. So I'm sure the students are going to benefit a lot out of this session. And before we move on to the next part, I would like to once again request all the students and participants to kindly mute themselves unless it is required or you're asked to do so. I repeat, all the students, kindly mute yourselves. Madhuri, please mute yourself. Yes, thank you. So moving on to the next part of today's webinar, which is the crux of the webinar, that is the scientific sessions. So to uh, navigate the scientific sessions, I would like to now request uh, Mr. Hamza sir to kindly come forward and then uh, continue with the scientific sessions by introducing and also navigating the sessions as they succeed. Over to you, Hamza sir. Uh, thank you very much. A very good morning to everybody. Uh, it's a really happy thing that uh, uh, such an initiative has been taken by the Tirthanga Mahavir University, or uh, I can say Tirthanga uh, College of uh, Nursing uh, the, at Moradabad. Moradabad, which is hardly uh, 200 meters, uh, 200 kilometers from Delhi. So the requirement, sensitization of uh, people at the peripheries, at the uh, adjacent states, that is a very urgent requirement. Just because everybody comes to Delhi for the treatment. And then if, if the, the kind of, uh, uh, the, of course, the very good hospitals are uh, there in uh, adjacent states and all, but uh, the states being large and the people have to uh, go from one place to the other and all these things uh, makes them easier to move to Delhi. One place where a small, say, 70 kilometers diagonally where we can reach to each and every hospital, but the thing is that they don't realize uh, that uh, it's not that easy to get the treatment even in Delhi. Whether it is in uh, public sector hospitals or uh, the private sector, most of the people cannot afford. So they <laughs> end, end up in Delhi. And uh, if it is just like uh, ma'am has already told, uh, um, Bargay ma'am has told about the palliative care needs, or uh, palliative care, how the evidence-based uh, uh, studies 
shows that there there has to be much uh, there we should be much things to do in the palliative care so the patients once put into the that stage of uh, uh, the disease that uh, uh, the, if the, from the very beginning the palliative care need is there but at least when the prognosis is bad and uh, uh, the, the there is no other way of treatment for available for the patient even at that time also there is no option to get the palliative care for these patients way back at their home or even in Delhi, because in Delhi also it is a handful of organizations and a handful of uh, public sector uh, setups uh, in uh, just like in all in the Institute of Medical Science of the Deng Hospital and all. So beyond that, the reach is very less. So the patients suffer. Patients may not be aware. Even the doctors are also not referring the cases to the palliative care in many of the cases. So ultimately, the patient suffers. So if at all something has to be done, so these kind of initiatives that the, uh, the uh, TP College of Nursing has started means that's a real good thing that you people can become the brand ambassadors of palliative care in their own areas. Each and every student can talk about this palliative care, can propagate this mission of palliative care in his or her own village. And if for that, if the uh, Tirthankar uh, Pashtunath College of Nursing is becoming instrumental, then this is a the first and the best step that uh, all of you have initiated. So that is about, and uh, my role is uh, just to moderate the session and uh, all the, the three, uh, rather I'll say the um, three experts of palliative care, they are here. Dr. Professor Dr. Rakesh, sir, and uh, Professor Dr. A.T. Kora, madam, and uh, Alice Tela, Virginia, ma'am. So they are the influence of palliative care, I'll say. And we talk about that subject, discipline of palliative care. And uh, uh, to introduce uh, Professor uh, uh, Dr. Dakar, sir, it's a long page of uh, about him. I'm not uh, going to uh, read, it, read everything, but a few things. Definitely, he is in the All India Institute of Medical Science. He is the professor now. And uh, he has done his uh, uh, MBBS from uh, U UCMS, that's the uh, University College of Medical Science, and then uh, MD in anesthesia in, uh, from Maulana Azad Medical College. And uh, from senior residency onwards, he is there in the Olympic Institute of Medical Science. And many publications and uh, the anesthesia association and everything, we're all, every day, time, sir, is there. And above all, that is all his uh, own achievements and all, above all, Sir is uh, really a, a best person when the palliative care, palliative care uh, uh, discipline is being talked about. Because whenever there is a propagation when, uh, or whenever there is a webinar or anything, we approach sir and uh, just on a uh, call or an SMS or a WhatsApp, sir agrees and sir takes out the time for that. Had that his mind, that matters a lot. And that is for the patients, that he wants that this needs to be disseminated to each and everybody. So that it's not that uh, somebody from Ames and alone or somebody from uh, uh, Calicut in uh, Kerala or alone doing this thing. No, it will not cover, cover the whole of India. So this is the individual's 
social responsibility of everybody and uh, just like sir if everybody understands that then definitely the patients will have a good time patients will have a real quality of life even while suffering from the uh, the dreaded diseases so let me invite professor dr dakesh sir to talk about the to talk to talk uh, about the introduction and need of palliative care and let us hear thank you so much uh, for all the kind words i think it's all the team who are doing good work uh, the institutes uh, like this who are bringing forward uh, to create awareness about the palliative medicine is uh, well appreciated and i'm very sure uh, to appraise all that the nip care is uh, doing wonderful work not only in creating awareness but providing services to the uh, deserving people who require palliation at some point of time to make the quality of life better so thank you so much uh, for inviting me to this session of the palliative care which is uh, very dear to my heart and i usually i cannot say no whenever i get a chance to interact with you all so when we say the palliative care i think many of you uh, have heard or maybe you must have seen some time also about the palliation or the supporting care so maybe i just uh, not take much time uh, in the chat you can say how many of you have heard, many of you are online yes michael has said yes sudeshwar so said yes of the people uh, may be online but they may not be listening to us i think the person is not very i assure you that next to us will be very important for you if you just uh, be listening to what we will be discussing next around one and a half to two hours you will get a lot of things that will be very very useful for your clinical practice in future and uh, these are the patients which are not uh, something called as a palliative care ward or they will not be a separate place where they can be taken care of this will be at all the places whether you are working in medical ward surgical ward neurology ward neurosurgical ward cardiac ward nephrology ward whatever the place you want it has to be there i will request uh, jiddi to yeah thank you uh, to uh, be aware of these things because until and unless you are aware of these aspects it will be too difficult for you to provide these services and as we go along you will realize that this is the domain i will request everybody and nazia b madam i will request everybody to uh, just themselves they are not asking or if they are not speaking something madam nazia b please students please mute yourself ready right so uh, we will go along i think i will request everybody just to pay attention it will be a really wonderful session which has been organized by dinip care and your institute and you will get some fair idea of uh, how to take this uh, very important service which is need for the day and which is for patients across all speciality so don't think palliative care is a separate speciality like neurology cardiology something like this palliative care is across speciality wherever you are working in the hospital you will find patients who will require supportive care or palliative care so just have a knack of it because you will be getting these patients and until as you understand the basic in basic uh, in, you know aspect of the palliative care it will be little difficult for you to provide those support system or those counseling or those transmission of the uh, support system to these needy patients at the time when they need it let's see this patient i'm just giving you one example but similar examples you will see in your wards a 35 year old gentleman with advanced cancer he has undergone surgery chemotherapy palliation but there was no response and now the patient comes with severe pain in the abdomen and it appears to be a metastatic disease and he was not responsive to surgery chemotherapy or radiation therapy and now he is having severe symptoms 
From the cure point of view, yes, definitely we want that all patients must be getting absolutely cured up or free from the disease. But many of these patients may not be getting full cure in spite of whatever the disease focused care we provide to these patients. And they will progress with the disease symptoms. And this is what these patients would require supportive care, which is also known as palliative care, which was started by Dame Cicely Saunders way back in 1967, who is uh, considered to be the founder of these events of the palliative care. Now, this is what we need to understand. You must have heard some many times in your clinical practice that when the patient is having advanced disease, we say that nothing can be done. But remember, that we may not be able to provide cure every time. Sometimes we are able to, but we definitely can provide comfort in all the patients at all point of time. And if we see for the chronic disease, as well as the cancer, many of these patients will come in advanced days when they cannot be cured. And that's why we need to provide these patients a symptom relief and comfort measures, which is under the ambit of palliative care. Now, we never say to the patients that nothing can be done for you if they have advanced disease. We always say, yes, we cannot cure you, but we will provide you all the symptom relief and comfort so that whatever the life is left, they leave that life in comfort. And this is the conventional definition of palliative care. Most of the time, we talk about the physical symptoms in our clinical practice. But if you see, understand this palliative care definition, we not only about talk about the physical symptoms, but we also take care of psychological, social, and spiritual aspect also in these patients. And for providing these type of care to these patients, it is very simple. We don't require a highly sophisticated environment or a ward with multiple of equipments or an intensive care unit. What you require is care beyond cure, no stable quality or stable functionality of life. But once it becomes advanced disease, they will succumb to death gradually and it will go on. But if you talk about the other disease like chronic heart disease, chronic kidney disease, chronic liver failure, chronic respiratory failure, they will have exacerbations of the disease intermittently, which cannot, which sometimes can be. Uh, provided relief and the functionality will improve, but they will gradually decline. And even for the frailty and dementia, which are more of a age-related changes, they again succumb to that slowly because their functionality will become down. So this means we can provide palliative care, just not for oncology patients, but patients with neurological disease, unstage renal failure, unstage respiratory failure, unstage heart failure, and stage liver failure. And these are a big group of population which cannot be cured, though there could be sometimes renal transplant, lung transplant, heart transplant. But still, this may not be an option for all the patients because of variable regions. And what these patients require is a supportive care, which includes all the four components. We should not always be talking about pain, respiratory discomfort, ascites but we should also talk about the social issues, the emotional or psychological aspect. So you look for all those symptoms and we are able to manage these symptoms to a large extent, but what we need is we need to assess these symptoms and provide the services to our patients so that we can take care of these concerns in the palliative care. And when we start treating, what we need to do is, this is nothing called a fixed approach. It has to be an individualized approach, which is patient person centered goal of care. We need to examine, assess each patient because each patient would have peculiar requirement. I mentioned about psychological, social, spiritual, disease related things, family related things. Each will have a different concern and hence we need to prepare a goal which is fitted for that particular patients. And for this, we require a teamwork. And that's why I say that each one of you is one of the very important member of the team. Because if you integrate in this teamwork, you will be able to provide a good comfort cable to these patients. 
and definitely at times we require a member a specialized team also and that's why you have to have a core team of doctors nurses physiotherapists nutritionists but sometimes we require patients who are rehabilitation experts surgeons and they becomes the expert team so once this multidisciplinary team is there we can at various plans including counselors volunteers even the family members social members they can fit into this multidisciplinary team to provide a total relief to these patients when i word use total relief this means all the four components physical psychological social spiritual and maybe emotional you can say which is a part of the psychological aspects now people think that uh, uh, palliative care is just the end of life no it's not the just of end of life care the palliative care now encompasses the modern medicine end of life is one of the component of palliative care where patient cannot be cured but when the patient is getting curative treatment these patient can have social issues they can have financial issues they can have physical problems of pain nausea ascites so even these patients require supportive care and hence as i mentioned at the beginning palliative care is for all and whatever i said just to summarize for you this is what is the principles of palliative care where we intend to provide relief from the pain and other distressing symptoms affirms life provide them a total holistic care including psychological spiritual and social including the family members and the, and with the help of a team approach uh, integrated care is provided to these patient so that we can enhance the quality of life it should be integrated in early in the course of illness when the patient has been diagnosed with a disease and just not the terminal illness and when the patient moves to the journey to the end of life care they have many issues we usually talk about good life but also we also should talk about good death these patient should not be suffering having agony having pain when they are terminally ill they may be bed bound they may be semi comatose they may not be able to take tablets they may not be able to take foods so even at this stage we should not think that they are end of life nothing can be done we have the options where we can manage these problems manage these symptoms and can provide comfort care even at the end of life and this is what i just mentioned when we talk about the palliative care palliative care starts at the diagnosis and then it continues till the patient is getting treatment and the death and even the palliative care goes beyond the death of the patients because the family members will be feeling bad because the patient has gone which may not may be a young patient or a bread earner family member and they also need support so that it can settle down so this is what i said that palliative care should be integrated along with the disease focused care continues till terminal illness and that should have a follow up of the family members in conjunction of the physical symptoms do provide them psychosocial and spiritual support now think where can we provide this palliative care palliative care can be provided any place we don't need a dedicated place with anything it can be home hospice hospital opd social groups it can be given at any place home is always the best place in these patients because they remain among the family and even in the indian culture they feel more comfortable with the family life with the family members around and can provide a total care to these patients but for this care at home it doesn't require a big infrastructure we don't need to recreate the icu or something like the icu or the like the hospital what we need is we need to just coordinate with the family members and communicate to them and provide the whole support system of home care to these patients and have a follow up into the hospital as and when required to make them comfortable now we also need to understand that there are certain things in which these can be offered to these patients who are receiving palliative care they do require support they do require symptom management but especially when these patients are in end of life we know that the disease is advanced and nothing curative intent is possible keeping them on ventilators providing them cpr giving them antibiotics high end and keeping them in an intensive care unit is not desirable in these group of patients 
We sometimes can give them treatment by tube feedings, treatment of the metabolic disorders, infections or transfusions, depending if they can improve the quality of life. But routinely, especially at terminal illness, all those things, all those interventions are not desirable. So to summarize what I said, that palliative medicine can be offered to patients of chronic disease of any age. They can have variable diagnosis, respiratory, cardiac, liver, kidney, oncology, AIDS, neurological disease, anyone. They can be offered at any time. We don't have that when the, only the patient will be terminal ill, will providing it. It can be offered at any time whenever the patient comes to you with certain symptoms. And this can be done at any place. And it requires a team approach of variable peoples. And that's why I said that each one of you, each one of us needs to understand the palliative care concept so that we can affirm life, promote quality of life, treat the person, support the family, and give them a comfort care. The task of medicine is to care even when it cannot cure. And this is the basic philosophy. We understand many diseases cannot be cured, especially the advanced disease. But does it mean that we should not take care of the patients? No. At each point of time, palliative care has something to offer to these patients to make them comfort. And this is what the basic philosophy of palliative care. So that's why just delete the word from your dictionary in clinical practice that now nothing can be done. Nothing can be offered for the patient because disease is advanced. Delete this and say, yes, we understand that you have a disease which cannot be cured, but whatever the time is, will make you comfort. will make you do your work comfortably. We will try to make your quality of life acceptable to you and the family members. And this is what the philosophy of palliative care is. We have many options to improve the quality of life for these patients, which you can, each one of you, we will discuss a little later. There are many programs and uh, just uh, mentioned in the beginning also, you have already initiated, nursing college has already initiated these sessions. Clinic Care is doing wonderful work and there are many associations who are doing certificate courses, the programs, and it has to be part of the nursing curriculum also. So each one of you can participate and contribute to a very large extent, irrespective of the work area that you are doing to make these persons comfortable and make them have a good quality of life. Each one of you has, or maybe a big role in improving the palliative care, and it can be easily done. Like these programs where you are being created with awareness the educational programs, the certificate courses, the inclusion of the topics in your nursing curriculums, in your on-job training. And then when you are trained, when you become a professional person, you can always provide this professional practice to the needy patients. And then you also need to create a public awareness like various NGOs, DNIP Care, Can Support. There are many organizations which are creating public awareness. Once public starts, having the option of getting this care and that gives them a good quality of life, we need more professional practitioners across the, across the country. And this is what is required through these type of sensitization programs, awareness programs, service programs. And once the services becomes available, I think we can do a little bit from our side to make all patients, all countrymen, irrespective of the disease status, are comfortable, a good life, and culminating into a good death to these patients so that they do not suffer. And similar suffering will not be seen in the family members also. So to just to summarize, last slide, what palliative care is, a comfort care. We are not talking about longevity. We are talking about quality. Everybody can, each one of you can offer it at any place to any patients of any chronic disease to make them comfortable. And I'm sure that each one of you has the competence to do it. You matter as a part of the team. Your values matter. And just learning the basic aspects of the palliative care, I'm sure you can create an atmosphere. You can create a value. You can create a value to your organization or the place you work so that we never say that 
nothing can be done for this patient with advanced disease. We can always say, yes, we'll make you comfortable. We'll make you good quality of life. And this is what the palliative care is. And I'm very, very sure that each one of you can participate very actively providing this human uh, care to our patients irrespective of the disease. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, over to Hamjaji for further proceedings of the questions. Uh, thank you, sir. It's all, everything on a positive note, sir. And the philosophy of palliative care. That's uh, well explained by Dr. Uh, Rakesh, sir. And uh, any questions? All of you are welcome to post the questions. So maybe I can just ask how many of you have a chance sometime in your clinical practice to see a patient who actually was suffering and you did something. I, I, I think we can ask you, what did you, do, what did you did for that particular patient that you think was uh, not from the curative aspect, but supportive aspect? Maybe just a human touch to make him or her comfortable or make just somebody financially settle down or somebody, some support system in the home care or something that you did it, okay, this is the how you can do your dressings at home so that you become comfortable. Anybody can share the experience, please. No I, think, oh. I think your nursing college is not going to take your exam or will uh, know, penalize you for asking. I'm sure, uh, Sideshwarji, is, no, is sir, not, at all. Place, <laughs> not at all. But I can say that who will, who or uh, he or she will answer. I can assure that Sideshwarji give one chocolate to them as a token sure. of <laughs> interaction. I am a retired person from right, India, trying to do my little bit Wonderful. wherever possible. I think you are the motivation for us. Thank you. Ria, Madam, Kratika, Srishti. Sorry, I'm calling you by first name. Many of you will be much more senior than me. I'll just apologize for the same. Then all chocolates will go to Hamjaji because nobody is answering. <laughs> so, anyhow, we'll continue. No, sir, what uh, sir, that, sir, sir, so many, so many things are there, but this is the College of Nursing, Tirthankar uh, University, Maheshwar University has got the privilege to speak out. So let the students utilize the privilege to get the chocolate. Maybe some inhibition or something maybe there. Uh, uh, I think uh, students do have the experience of carrying the patients and out of the box doing something for the patient because they have to take case studies and uh, care plan. So the nursing course is designed in such a way that they just can't skip out of these aspects. So it's a part of their training. Perhaps they are, uh, they are a little hesitant yeah. or not. Uh, so somebody has come up, uh, sir. Uh, I completed a certificate course on IAPC and had the opportunity to undergo the practical. Somebody has written that. Wonderful. I think uh, uh, Dr. Raja Rajeshwari, Wonderful. I think uh, each one of you, there are many options for doing various courses. As uh, Michael sir mentioned about Pallium India, Raja Rajeshwari Madam mentioned about the IAPC certificate courses. Uh, your nursing council has also included some aspects of palliative care into a curriculum. And these type of programs in association with various NGOs like DNIP care, again, creates the basic understanding of palliative care into a clinical practice. So I think uh, uh, we have a way forward and uh, the nursing college will take it forward uh, for more sessions or having the programs at their nursing college so that more people can join. Only what I mean to say is uh, nurse, the palliative care is nothing called a specialized branch having a separate ward. What I mean say, to say is that palliative care is required across the specialty. So wherever you are posted, you can do something for this. Okay. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. So, uh, again, uh, before going to the next speaker, uh, I would like to say something. Uh, that uh, nurses, see, all of you are here, you have, you have to interact. It is not a radio talk. Uh, so you people can interact and these kind of experts you will not get on everyday basis or uh, whatever it may be. So, so this is an opportunity for you, though we are 200 kilometers apart, uh, but uh, just like uh, 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 Alice Tella ma'am, she also may, she may be uh, even 
more uh, dist at, at a distance uh, place or uh, even Kora ma'am. So we are getting at a, at a point here and this is the opportunity you have to uh, raise your questions, you have to interact, all these, whatever the possible. So uh, nurses, especially you have to interact means why I'm telling you, it's not only in this webinar interacting, you have to interact with the, uh, the patients your smile one smile from on your face that makes a lot of difference to the patient who is uh, continuously looking at you when you are uh, doing some procedure or you are uh, giving the medicine whatever it may be so you are the focus there and so your interaction your uh, body language your uh, the sm smile on your face See, as somebody said, no, when you see somebody without a smile, you give yours that way. And, and you, as the budding nurses, budding nursing professionals, uh, the nurses, nurses, no, nurse, nurse, nurses are there when the first breath is taken, and nurses are there when the last breath is taken. So you are so important, and you are taking up this palliative mission as well. That is even more uh greater achievement so uh somebody's writing that as Raghur sir mentioned there is need to develop the right attitude towards the care of terminating of course uh that anyway uh sir will be as expert will be speaking about later on but uh the thing is that so uh your role as a nursing professional in the public health that is important and uh that role that is to be discussed and uh, uh, deliberated by uh, Professor Dr. A.T. Khora, ma'am, who got the Florence Nightingale Award also. And uh, she was the uh, nursing superintendent of uh, St. Stephen's Hospital in Delhi. And even uh, uh, she's these many years she has served the means her name is almost synonymous with the St. Stephen's Hospital. Dr. Kora ma'am, whosoever we talk about, uh, Kora ma'am, oh, everybody is having a respect for her and uh, that kind of, no. So ma'am ma will be able to speak about all this, uh, whatever the nuances and whatever your career. The, the nursing professionals here, it's, it's uh, in addition to this mission of palliative care that you are going to take up and uh, uh, in your career path, but at the same time, what you can achieve further through this, that all these things she will be able to speak about. And uh, sir has already, uh, Professor Ragesh sir has already told about the palliative philosophy. So that that uh, so whatever Sarah has put it, no, that pure may have limitations, but not for not for care. So that's it. Ilaj ki seema hai, lekin seva ki nahi. That's it. That's what it is. So whatever little bit, and if if I am to say, just raising your bum when you are comfortably sitting in a metro train or in a uh, bus or in public transport, wherever it may be, and seeing on the corner of the uh, coach, somebody with maybe a bald head and with a big packet of uh, maybe MRI or CT or uh, that film and all, he is standing there or she is standing there that just offer your seat for the next 15 minutes of your journey. For that person, there you start doing palliative care. So, sir was telling it's not a big uh, uh, um, uh, rocket science. So, it is that attitude, how you are behaving at the, with others. And as I told, that smile you pass on to the patient, there your palliation starts. You are into it then. So let me just welcome uh, Professor Dr. Eti Khora, ma'am, who is rather a uh, model for all of you to follow, follow, and uh, in the in your nursing career. So over to 
Edigora, ma'am, please. Thank you, Mr. Hamsa, for the welcome and the introduction. A very good afternoon to one and all who are listening to me. It's a pleasure to talk to the students from Pepanga University. The topic which is given to me is nurses' role in palliative care. Dr. Rakesh has already mentioned, and Bhargavi Ma'am has mentioned about the palliative care and many aspects of it. Can I have the slides, please? Yes, ma'am, I'm sharing it. Okay. When you talk about palliative care, it is the total, active total care of patients with an incurable, progressive, life-threatening condition and their families by a multi-professional team. When you talk about the active total care of patients, slides please. Uh, active uh, total uh, care, how do you do that? Uh, you said something what we can give to the patients when we are visiting the patients in the ward or no, it is much, much more than that. That is only a part of it. But when we are telling total active care, it includes much more than that. I often check the status on WhatsApp. And Kaisare patients, cancer survivors, and people who are undergoing treatment, and people who are suspected for cancer, I keep in touch with them. I keep talking to them, or encouraging messages that they have, or unke saath chalne ki koshish karte hain. Few days back, WhatsApp status me, a cancer patient who had bilateral mastectomy, underwent chemotherapy. Her mother passed away with adenocarcinoma. Two months back, her only sister, younger to her, younger to her by few years, was diagnosed as a cancer patient with the third stage of cancer. Totally shaken up in the status, usne e likha, ek ma ka pyar, aur koi nahi de sakta, ek ma apni bachon se, bachon ka khair jo karta hai, wo aur koi nahi kar sakta. This particular person is mother of two children. I was shaken up. Are you okay? So her message came telling, I'm okay. And I asked, why did you put such a message? She said, nothing. She told her son, Mera operation hua hai, so sample biopsy ke liye jo veja hai, uska report sahi nahi hai. Now, sahi nahi hai word can be taken up in various ways. So when I told him what is actually happening with her, he was also taken up and he started crying. But, he visited her and now also, now she has to, her surgery is over. Now she has to have 25 radiotherapy. So her son is the one who is preparing her and taking her for the radiotherapy. So when we are trying to give the best quality of life for a patient, remember the family, 
of the patient is also needing care. They need encouragement. They need care. And a nurse is a person who is having unique opportunity to maintain the hope for the family and the patient by giving excellent physical, psychological, social, and spiritual care. Why do we say the nurses can give excellent physical, psychological, social, and spiritual care? It is basically because when it is the fourth slide, Mr. Hamsa. It is the fourth slide. No, the slide just before that. The nurses are the people who are there with the patient all throughout. And nurse, if she's having good observation, she can understand the physical needs of the patient. She can understand the psychological needs of her patients and she can extend the need accordingly. Many a times, as Dr. Hagesh was telling, if patient is the only breadwinner of the family, it will be very difficult for them to face the situation. Why? Always they will have the question, may be maroge? treatment ke liye thousands and one question comes in their minds hum nurses ko more sensitive hona jaruri hai sensitive hona jaruri hai kyun kai dafa patients physical problems wo hame bata denge aur hame bhi samajh mein aayenge magar unka psychological problems the worries the fears fear of death fear of God. not death fear of not getting adequate treatment, all this can come up in the mind of the patient. And social. Joe Marij actively apne doston se mil raha tha, apne office mein kaam kar raha tha, ya apna working area mein dousron ke saath mil jul ke hasi maja kar ke dil bita rahe the. Wo sadhani. Suddenly, when he is okay, hospitalized, soga, he will be feeling isolated. And many a times, a nurse may not understand. Similarly, the spiritual need. When a nurse is telling the patient, you should pray, patient may understand, patient may do, but very often, patient ask the nurses, "Me kyon dua karna hai? Me itni dua karte hain. Uske baujud Parmeshwar ne mujhe ye bimari diya hai. Fir me kyon dua karna hai? What answer you will give? Can you tell the patient, "No, it is not like that. You need to pray more. Then God will answer. If you say that." Patient may not agree. Allow the patient to practice what will be the spiritual practice, what he or she is wanting to do. Then you talk about physical well being, functional ability. The next slide, please. Next slide, please. Functional ability when you say, the person who was doing all the physical care as his own suddenly comes to a stage in which 
others may have to do the things for him. Some people may find it easy to accept, but some people may not take it up. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. When the physical well being is affected, it is making the person to go through a lot of pain. How can somebody help me to change my clothes? How can somebody give me bath? Why can't I go to the bathroom and take bath as my own? These are some of the questions what patients put up. Person may feel excessive fatigue. Person may feel that he or she is not having enough strength. They are wanting to lie down, but not able to take a rest, not able to sleep. They do have problems like nausea, appetite, loss, and sometimes constipation and pain. Many a situations you see, patient may come up with some complaint or the other like this. Can I have the slide on psycho psychological well-being? Psychological well-being, when we say the patient experiences loss and change of role. Many a times, a person who is the head of the family suddenly becomes sick and no more he is considered as head of the family. That is, he is losing the position as head of the family and he is in a position to change, accept the change of his role. His son or somebody else may become as head of the family. Similarly, person may lose independence and control. Person may have loss of hope for the future. A person who is wanting to do so many things for future suddenly is not able to do it. Person may lose hope for the future. Person may have to give up his work. Loss of employment is one factor which put the patient into such psychological disturbed situation. Loss of place in the family as the breadwinner. As the person is no more the head of the family, his role changes and he may not be the breadwinner. The psycho psychological aspects, when you say, it marked responses seen at various points in cancer patients. The time of diagnosis or soon after. At the time of diagnosis, when the doctor is telling the patient or when, as I told you, the lady who worked with me was diagnosed, first her reaction was she kept crying. She kept crying. And then the reaction was, doesn't want to tell others in the family. She said, others in the family will be disturbed. But more than that, she herself was finding it difficult to accept the diagnosis. At the time of the first recurrence, again, the first time when it is diagnosed, person go through the end of treatment with a lot of hope. But when they have the recurrence, they lose hope. That is the time when nurses can do a lot. Patient ke saath ke. Patient jo bol jai. That you listen carefully. Many a times, we nurses talk a lot and listen less. 
But in palliative care, we need to have just the opposite. We talk less, do more, and listen more. Why I said talk less. A comforting touch. Your comforting hands on the shoulder of the patient or your comforting hands on the hand of the patient makes a lot of difference than the words what you are telling. The function declines as the person is not able to do certain things. He feels, oh, sab kuch kadam ho gaya. Sometimes patients do express, sab kuch kadam ho gaya. Ab mujhe aage dekhne ke liye, aage sochne ke liye, kuch bhi nahi hai. And as death approaches, many a times patients feel that when death is approaching, that person is going to handle the situation in a very different way. But he or she may not be able to do it. Spiritual well-being. The aspects of spirituality, finding meaning. Why am I here? Very often, patient nurses are pushed मैं इस दुनिया में खाए के लिए रहना है मेरा रहने से दूसरों को ज्यादा तकलीफ ही हो रहा है किसी को भी कोई बेनिफिट हो ही नहीं रहा कमिंग हु आर माय मैं खाए से क्या बन रहा है कनेक्टिंग हु आर वी हम सब एक दूसरे के लिए कौन है how many of you can say to your patient, I'm here to take care of you. I'm here to listen to you. I'm here to help you to walk this path of difficulty along with you. And transcending is beyond the senses. When a nurse comes to understand, their role is only मेडिसिन देना या पेशेंट को बताना इज नॉट इट्स मच मच बियॉन्ड देन यू विल बी एबल टू डू ए बेटर पैलेटिव केयर कॉमन स्पिरिचुअल कंसर्न्स आर पर्सन मे हैव पर्सनल आइडेंटिटी मीनिंग ऑफ सफरिंग एंड पेन ऑफ एंड पेशेंट्स आस्क मैंने क्या गलती किया है परमेश्वर मुझे ये बीमारी दिया मुझे ये तकलीफ से क्यों जाना है मैं ऐसे जीने से क्या फायदा है पर्सन मे हैव डिफरेंट वैल्यू सिस्टम दे आस्क क्वेश्चन टू गॉड दे मे हैव गिल्ट फीलिंग्स मैंने कोई गलती नहीं किया परमेश्वर मुझे ये बीमारी दिया है दैट इज अ स्टेटमेंट वॉट Often patients say, then they talk about life after death. Many a times you see that patients are trying to justify their own self. Can you have the pictures on the 11th slide, please? Pictures on the 11th slide. Is it? Is this one no? 11th slide. The 11th ventilator floor. patient. Ventilated patient. Is it? Is this one? 11th slide. That is slide of a patient on ventilator. Okay. Now, is this it, no? This, yes. This one? Uh, no, the body. one what you are showing is on the various aspects of palliative care sir the slides are not moving on the screen sir maybe uh, you can stop right. sharing and try resharing once again sir okay yeah now walking with a sick person 
the picture what yes the slide before that the slide before this now this particular patient was on ventilator for almost three months the patient was in and out of ICU and the family was finding it difficult. Next slide, please. The, you can see that in this, patient is out of ventilator. Patient's son went to see the patient and he is showing the pictures of patient's grandchildren. And slowly, she was smiling. Now, when we are taking care of patients who are very sick, we have to walk along with the sick person and the family members. This particular patient and family, I was taking care of them. So many a times we find it difficult to do this. But the nurses can do so much. Walking with a sick person, it's not an easy thing. Ungo samachna, ungo samchana, dono karna padta hai. Patient may cooperate with you, patient may not cooperate with you. If the patient is very sick, patient's family members may get upset and irritated with you. All these things can happen. The next slide, please. The same patient got better and she is sitting up. Ventilator is out and she is having a tracheostomy tube in and she is sitting with the legs hanging. I used to visit this patient. Jabbi mein jate thi, a broad smile face pe aate the. And she used to put her hand out. Wo apna haat dete the, taki I could hold her hand. Jab main unka haat pakadte the, unka smile used to brighten up. And these are the simple things what you students also can do for your patients. The when you talk about the essential components of palliative care, creating hope, being honest, and being open with the patient is important. Next slide, please. So symptom relief, that is, if the person is having pain, try to relieve the pain, psychological support, instead of saying, Many, very often, nursing students or even nursing staff. Ek dusre se bolte aur patient se bolte. Ham do aapko psychological support dengi. But what is that? That each one of you need to know. Your silent presence may be something which gives a lot of support to your patient. Your symbol, smile, or one word, what you say, maybe something which encourages the patient. The teamwork and partnership is also important. As we have seen, when you talk about palliative care, palliative care is patient-centered. It is a partnership between the patient and the carer, that is, Ham, our care extend kar our patient happy wo receive kar rahe. So the care part is having the partnership between the patient and the carer, focused on healing rather than curing. As Dr. Rakesh and the Bhargavi ma'am said, we are focusing on healing, not on curing. There are situations in which our care is making the patient to come out of the situation. That also can happen. Death accepting, but also life enhancing. Many a times you see that 
your patients are accepting the death situation when you are preparing them to accept it. And for that, we have to prepare karna both jaduri hai. Parity care services can be extended anywhere and everywhere. Home care, it can be consultations, it can be in the OPDs of your hospital, it can be daycare centers, it can be inpatient care, it can be bereavement support, and it can be a hospice care. And you need to be good communicators. If you are not good in communication, you will not be able to do good palliative care. And patients do understand the communication, not the verbal communication, but much more than that, the nonverbal communication, your facial expression, your eye contact, your body language, your postures, your pitch of voice, the pace of uh, speech, the um, touch what you use for communicating, all this makes a lot of difference. And remember, when you are doing the palliative care, introduce yourself and protect your patient's privacy. Never ever you should be little the problems of the patient. Be a good listener. And do not sidetrack or ignore the patient's questions. In simple ways by which they can understand, try to answer for their questions. Do not promise anything that you cannot do, you cannot fulfill. So, dear students, aap log jo palliative care kar sakte hai, uske liye, jo palliative care aap log kar sakte hai, uske liye, what you need to have is a good attitude and mindset in which you are caring crosses the boundaries, crosses the limitations, what you are putting and going forward. So thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Any questions? It's not going in. Huh? But just uh, from the patient side, anytime you have thought about the patient's problems, patient also have the same problem. Seeing us very busy, the patient may think, why should I tell all my problems to the sister or the doctor? Second thing, Sometimes they are afraid that if I tell everything, they may tell, this is what is your problem. This is what you are, you see your diagnosis. So they are afraid of hearing the truth, the actual diagnosis. Even they feel that if I tell everything, they may deny treatment, like in HIV patients. Even in the COVID also, maybe they will deny my treatment. So they don't open up and tell everything to the doctor or the nurse and the biggest part is the language because we use a lot of medical terms and the patient cannot understand the medical terms whether it is an educated patient or an uneducated patient we need to come to the patient's platform and tell them talk to them in their language so that they can understand what is going what is happening with them the next problem is that Many times we don't assess the patient's problems properly. It is physical, psychosocial, spiritual, and financial. We are more giving consideration, concerns to only the physical problems in the hospital. So what happens with the patient is, with all the anxiety inside, the patient's physical problem will take an upper hand. So what we, why we need to communicate is, to reduce the anxiety of the patient so that their physical problems also will reduce. We can reduce the isolation of the patient and the family. 
we can involve the family and for in the patient's care. We can teach the patients, the family, how to take care of the patient's NG tube, uh, indwelling catheter, how to give a bath, how to make a occupied bed. This all will happen only if you communicate with the patient and the family. Without communicating, just going, give an injection, giving a medication, that's not going to work. Open up, open your mouth and communicate to the patient. Ask the patient, can I give you the injection? See, he's not going to tell you not to give the injection. He will just tell, say, tell you, um, please, ma'am, please, sister, see that it doesn't pain me. And just you tell the patient, I know if I'm injecting, it will pain. Yeah, there will be pain, but I'll see that the pain is reduced while I'm giving. You will jolly will take the injection. So communicating is very important. Why? Because the need of communication is to reduce the anxiety of the patient and the family so that they open up and talk to us. There will be better complaints of our treatment and management. Telling your patient that take food and then take this medication gives a good compliance so that the patient won't have gastritis. If you don't tell this, the patient will take the, uh, this one medication and after that come and tell you that I'm having gastritis. For that, we have to open our mouth. See, God has given us two ears to listen and one mouth to talk. So wherever it is needed, there we have to open our mouth and talk to the patient. So communication is important in that way. To reduce the isolation of the patient, we need to talk to the family, tell them, yeah, the patient is not well, but that doesn't mean the patient has to be put in a, um, a room where the patient is not having any connection with the other families. The patient can talk with everyone. The patient can sit with everyone. As Madam Cora said, usually what happens is they lost their role in their family. No need. Why? At least you can take their they are this one concerned, at least they can talk to them before taking any decision. The patient is not going to tell you to change the decision. The patient may just will be happy say, thinking that, uh, of course, see my family has asked my concern also. And that is very important. Now, when we talk all these things, some things are very important. Dr. Madam Cora already, she said about eye contact, uh, uh, listening to the patient face-to-face, uh, uh, -to, -face, to sit near the patient and all. With that, the other thing is empathy. Empathy has a very good, big role in communication. Why? Because I'm putting myself in the patient's seat where I can understand what the patient is going through. The patient is having pain. Otherwise, the patient is going through some other problems. I need to understand that. Then only I will have empathy. See, sympathy is just like that. Oh, this happened to you. Why this happened and all. No. We need empathy to the, for, for the patient. So that when empathy is there, what happens? We are going to the patient's platform because patient cannot come to our platform because we are on the upper platform. We need to go to the patient's platform. And so empathy is very important. Where we show our compassion, our love, everything to the patient. We, sit, we can sit and hear to the patient. We can listen to the patient and their family. Be genuine with the patient and the family. See, it will be difficult for breaking bad news because breaking bad news you need, need really good experience but at least don't tell a lie to the patient you can even tell the patient see i don't know actually but i can help you in one thing i can talk i can talk to someone else who can talk to you about on this topic they may talk to you about what is the problem with you but don't tell the patient that you are not suffering from cancer, that 
nothing is going to happen. You don't have any kidney problems and all. Because when the patient comes to the hospital, when it is written a cancer hospital itself, they know something is wrong. That is why they have come over there. So if a biopsy is taken, they know something was wrong. That is why the biopsy was taken. And please do not judge the patient. Black and white, east and west, north or south, all are human beings. Give respect to them. In any part of the world, the patient may come to you. But for us, they are a person suffering with a lot of problems. So they have come to us to tell about their problems. And we have to sit and hear about their problems. And that is very important. So please don't judge the patient. The patient may be alcoholic who has come to you with pain, but that is a past thing. We have to focus on the patient's problem. He may be a smoker with a peripheral vascular disease due to smoking. Please don't go into that judgment. It can be a terrorist. It can be a prisoner. See them as a human being. And they have come to us with their problems. When you sit near the patient, listen to the patient. Please don't sit and scribble or write. Listen to the patient. Have a contact with the patient. Just look at the patient, what the patient is talking to you. Anything you want to ask in between, you can just ask. But don't every, every now and then, please don't interrupt. Ask relevant questions. Give time to hear. Give time to them. If you don't have time, tell them about that. Instead of just getting up and going or asking, okay, okay, everything is fine. You just tell me other, your physical problems. No. If you don't have time, you should tell the patient beforehand itself. See, after I have only 10 minutes to talk to you. So whatever is very important, you can tell me. After that, maybe I will, be, I will try to make someone to talk to you or after I go. Once I come back, we can sit and talk. And before leaving a patient, please tell the patient that I am going also. Otherwise, the patient will be waiting for you. Suppose you, well, you got a call from someone, some emergency call. Just tell the patient, one minute, I have a call. Let me attend it. And if you want to go, just tell the patient that I want to leave. Mostly what happens in the hospitals is we'll take the mobile and we'll just walk off and the patient will be sitting and looking. So that is very important. Now, again, when we talk about these things, uh, one more thing is very important. Wow. Important is when you sit, the, sit near the patient, uh, you know, sometimes the patient may become silent. So we have to tolerate the silence also of the patient. Maybe the patient is trying to uh, recollect something to tell you or maybe controlling the emotions. So give time to them. If they are crying, let them cry. But don't tell the patient, please don't cry, don't worry. No. See, everyone has this one to get worried when they hear about some problems. Leave that to them. Even if you say not to worry, they will worry. Comparing the patient, that is not good. Comparing with one patient to another. Saying to one patient, just look at that person. Uh, he also has come yesterday only. Same problem like you. But you see, he's tolerating a lot, his pain. Please don't tell that to the patient. Because I am an individual. So treat every patient as an individual. Respect them. Now, the topic itself is death, dying, and palliative care. Why do the patients need to know about their... Uh, diagnosis when you talk about breaking bad news uh, because it is their right. Second thing, uh, they are need to 
no about their diet so that whatever is left over in their life something unfinished business we can say otherwise unfinished work we can say which they have to complete it before they leave this world maybe they want to see their daughter's marriage before their death if i hide the diagnosis what happens to the patient is the patient may not come out with the, this one he will be just going like suddenly one day he will come to know that he is suffering from so and so disease and he doesn't have much days and that's the point where he must have thought in his mind why these doctors nurses they didn't tell me that i am suffering from such a disease and my time is very near a patient asking you am i dying if you ask the patient why you are asking me this question he has a lot of things to uh, settle before he goes maybe he has taken a loan he want to finish it otherwise he want to tell someone that he has taken a big loan he has to pay the money he may tell his family that please let me see my daughter's marriage before my death something is there behind that is why he says maybe he wants a good death he may tell to the family member please don't take me to the hospital i want to die at home and that is why he may be asking you this question he want a peaceful death at home with all his beloved people around him maybe he want to take some decisions so we need give, we need to give the patient and family that respect and that is why we say breaking bad news is very important see breaking bad news is not as uh, easy job i would tell you because we need to find out from the patient what the patient knows why the patient is has been taken to the hospital why these investigations were done we need to find out in a in a way when we communicate whether the patient really want to know about the diagnosis what the patient wants to hear from us and it is just step by step it is not that you got the report and you are just telling the patient yeah your report has come you are having cancer or your kidney is failed no we cannot go like that it, there is a lot of steps for that we have to prepare ourselves we have to prepare the patient and the family we have to get all the information in our hand we have to acknowledge their emotions we need to find out from them what they would like to hear from us and how much they want to hear from us it's not that giving full cake to the patient we have to give in bits and bits because they as soon as they hear that they are have suffering from something very life threatening illness then everything is stop there after that whatever you tell it goes above the head and one more thing is that whether this patient really wants to hear or maybe the family will tell please don't tell them anything because he will commit suicide that also can happen that has happened also many times sis telling the patient that yeah your report has come you are suffering from cancer and uh, the patient left and the patient commented and committed suicide don't give all the options for the patients let them take the solution surgery uh, chemo radiation dialysis give the options but they have to select it you can advocate for the patient and the family that is something else but let them think what is good for them and whenever a patient's family is saying not to tell about the diagnosis to the patient there is something behind it i have come across patient's family saying yeah previously he has said that if he suffers from a dreaded disease he will commit suicide he may faint he may have a cardiac problem so that is why the family and the family has a lot of concern for their loud ones so they may tell you please don't tell it but you have to find out why and tell them that i am i may not tell but he may come to know from some other people 
So we need to tell him. If not I, why can't you people break the bad news? At least that severity will be less when the patient comes to us. See, breaking bad news is most of the time what happens is most of the time patients know a little bit, but they are not, what is it, fully sure about it. And that's why they are coming. And just don't break it just like that. That's how we break a balloon. No. From each step, we have to find out what was okay. happening with the patient so that the patient also will be prepared to hear what we are going to tell the patient. That is very important. And a dying patient, he knows that his body is slowly giving up. I have come across, many of our nurses, we have come across we all have come across a patient who is dying. The patient knows that he is slowly moving to death because he knows some changes in his body. One patient was just holding my hand and she said, I am I'm dying, but I did not see my son. The son was somewhere in the army, somewhere in the corner. And he was just, she was holding my hand. She was telling, sister, I am dying, sister. But I did not see my son, sister. I am dying, sister telling she passed away. But till the end of the bad time, she had in her my heart, uh, she was thinking that I didn't see my son. I still remember that. And this happened with many people. Some, some patients, think of the patients in ICU. They are not able to see anyone. We have to give a chance to the family members, at least for one or two minutes, just to come be at the bedside of that patient who is on the ventilator to say bye. Most of the time after death, we go and tell uh, your patient has passed away. Otherwise we say patient's condition is very bad. You wait after sometimes we say the patient has passed away. Every person has the right to stand next to the dying person. They got a lot of things to, they may not talk, but their eyes may talk, their emotions may talk, that all that non-verbal mean will talk to them. So we need to learn more about palliative care, more about communication, more about many things we have to learn. And thankfully in BSc nursing, for my fourth year now, anyhow, palliative care has been done mandatory for 20 hours, it has come. And hopefully, let us see, something will come back. Uh, maybe we will start having MSc in palliative nursing, this one in, this one in palliative nursing. Hopefully we may get diploma, something is going to come. And before that, any time, Special thanks to our principal, our university, for giving us this permission to conduct this webinar. And thanks to all the students for being with us till the end. So thank you once again. Thank you, Hamza, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. The feedback link is there in the chat box. It is active only up to the 3 p.m. After that, it will be deactivated. So I request all the students to kindly fill the forms before 3 p.m.